Hi there, and today's back with another Zelix Spectrum programming video, and today might be a little bit of an ambitious one. I was going to split this into two videos, but um, I think I'll be able to cover it all in one. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And this is all about uh, animation. So first we're going to open up Falling Spiders. Now in my code now, I'm putting in these lines which say REM, and it uh, stands for Reminder. These don't actually do anything in the code, it's just a way of putting sort of comments in your code so that you know what each section does. And I've also put before and after each one just a colon which means a blank line so it stands out more. If I just show you what the program does first. And we've got this spider character which we made before dropping down on a thread. So if we go to the top of the screen, so this is the spider input which we've already covered. So this is how to make that spider character when you push uh, the graphics key and S. So we already know that. We're going to do a similar thing for the line input. So the uh, thread the spider comes down on. So I won't go into too much detail, but it's the same way that we did the spider. But instead of making the spider sprite, we're just doing, if you can see here, they're all 16. So all the pixels will be underneath each other to make that straight line. And we're going to set that to the letter G. So that's quite a simple part of the program. And then this bit here is the actual animation. So to make it all look like it's falling from the top, we're going to use a for command uh, for the letter L and 0 to 20 so it's going to repeat 20 times so print at at the location of L3 now this is something which was pointed out in the comments which is quite important when you're using low resolution graphics which we're using now the way the two coordinates are is it actually does the the line first so the y-axis and then it does the column which is like the x-axis so zero zero is here and this first coordination will give you which line it's on and this second coordinate will give which uh, column it's in whereas if you're using high resolution graphics the zero zero is down here and it will do the column first and then the line going up you know X and then Y so that's quite unusual why they do that but it's just something quite important you have to remember so printing at the line number 0 at the top here and column 3 so it would be the third column across in ink black and we're using that graphics we made of the line so it's going to print a line then print at line 0 plus 1 so just underneath in the same column 3 the spider so basically we're going to print a line with a spider underneath it oh yeah and that's in ink red then it's going to pause for 10 which is a fifth of a second and then it's going to repeat with the next command back up here remember it adds on one each time so what it will do is it will print the line over the top of the spider where it was and then drop the spider down one and it keep doing that so the line will come in then the spider the line then the spider and it makes it look like the spider is falling from the top to the bottom and we'll just watch that one more time so that's quite simple uh, next we want the spider to run along the bottom of the screen so if we open opening up scuttling and I'll just run that program for you. There we go. Again, quite an easy one. We'll go to the top. And as you can see, it's the same program as before. So the spider input, the line input, the animation. And then we got the scuttling, and as you can see, these uh, reminders break it down so it's uh, quite easy to read. 
So once it's got to the bottom of the screen, so the spider's at the bottom, it's then going to go for another for statement, this time for the letter C, and it's going to be from 3 to 30, going up in ones. The reason it's at 3 is because we want to use that value because it's um, three columns across at the start. So print at line 21, because it's at the bottom of the screen, column number three, so where it is, a blank square. So that's gonna blank out the spider. Then next to it, but one column along, it's gonna print the spider. And then it's just gonna pause for five, and then it's gonna loop back round. So basically what that's doing is printing over the spider and make it disappear, and putting the spider next to it. Make it disappear next to it. So it looks like it's running along the bottom of the screen. So if we run that, and there we go, some simple animation. So the next one we're going to use our pyramids from an, a previous program. And if we run that, And as you can see, what we've got is spiders dropping from the sky instead of uh, the lasers shooting up stars. And as they hit the background picture, it's digging through the picture and then creating like a flashing spider at the bottom of the screen. The other thing to note is when the line shoots and hits the spider, the spider actually changes to a yellow ink color, which is quite important in the next part of the program we do. So I'll just show you how we've done this. We go to the top. Uh, just to note, the spider input I've added here at the bottom of the screen. Um, this is from the previous program. Just so that when you press the um, the graphics key and the S, you get this spider shape. So that's where the spider bit is, just at the bottom there. So we've created a new graphic as well called explosion we're not using this yet but I'll just explain it um, it's going to be in the next part of the program and it's done the same way as the spider and the spider thread so we're just creating a explosion type graphic and that's going to be set to the letter E next is the pyramid program which we already know you can watch my previous video to see what that does basically draws the lines and the pyramids and fires off that laser beam from the corner. Sorry, that's where the shooting line is down there. So that does the um, the ground and the pyramids only and then the line shooting out is further down here. So stuck in here is the spider appearing at a random line and then falling down. So what we're doing is gonna let the letter H be a random decimal point times by 31 which will give us a value between 0 and 31 and then we're using the for statement to set the letter V between 0 and 20 so then we're going to print at uh, 0 to start with so that's the vertical line so it's going to start at 0 so it's going to start at the top of the screen and then a random horizontal so it'd be anywhere along the top, a blank space, and then one below it on the vertical line, we're gonna put the spider. So basically that line there is gonna print a space at the top of the screen on a random column and put a spider underneath it. And then it's gonna loop around and it's going to drop the blank square to delete the spider and put the spider below it like we did before when the spider came down the screen but it's just going to be on the random line so that's how it's dropping down the screen and just so you know there's the uh, 
the next statement which is after the line shooting out because what we want is the spider to be created at the top of the screen the line to shoot out and then it just starts to drop down and each time the line shoots then this last part here just this part here is saying print at 21 H so basically this is happening after the spider reaches the bottom of the screen it's saying at row 21 which is at the bottom in that same H column as where the spider is it's going to print a flashing red and yellow spider at the bottom and that's going to stay there and then the whole program is going to loop back around and it's going to put another random spider at the top and drop it down I hope that makes sense so we'll just run that one more time There you go, so every time the spider moves down it fired out that random line it keeps dropping down until it gets to this bottom line and then it does that flashing part of the program. So now the final part, if we open up explosion, exploding so we're just adding in this part of the program here there's a line 190 which we're sticking in the middle of the program so it tests if the line hits the spider so it's using uh, if command and there's this new one called ATTR which stands for attributes now what this does is it tests um, what the attributes are of a square on the screen so it's saying test the attributes of V plus 1 and H which is the uh, coordinates of where the spider is and if it equals 14 which I'll explain in a minute then go to line 500 in the code so what this is doing is it's saying that if the sp spider's location equals this then jump to a different part of the code now this attribute value here what it does is it takes the ink color which can be a 0 to 7 then it adds on the paper color which is also 0 to 7 but it times as that number by 8 and it adds those two together also if the ink is set as bright it adds another 64 to it and if it's flashing it adds another 128 to it and basically it, it gives you that binary number which is set to a decibel conversion so this number 14 we've got a, a paper of blue in this um, program which is 1 so 1 times 8 is just 8 and then we add to it the ink which if it's uh, 6 which is yellow 8 plus 6 is 14 so basically all this is saying is if the area where the spider is has a blue background and yellow ink then go to 500 and as I've said before when the laser beam crosses through the spider it changes the ink of the spider to yellow so if you're following that <laughs> I've made that clear all this line is saying is when that line hits the spider turns it yellow it picks it up because the attribute of that area is now 14 and it will jump down to 500 so if we go down so if we jump down to this bit of code here which is um, where we display the explosion so it's changed the spider to yellow so it knows it's been hit uh, so it will print at that location of where the spider was a flashing paper red and the ink is yellow obviously uh, the explosion symbol which we created at the top of the screen and then it will pause for a tenth of a second and then it will loop back up to create another spider at the top so I hope that makes sense I know it's a little bit 
jumbled because I'm not that great at explaining it. But the whole program is exactly the same. The spider's dropping down. If it reaches the bottom, it makes a red and yellow flashing spider. But at the same time, this line is shooting out the side. If it crosses the spider, it turns it yellow, changes its attribute to yellow, which then this program picks up as it being hit. It then changes that spider on the screen into an explosion and it flashes an explosion. And this is hopefully what it looks like. And there we go, it all works. So the spiders are falling down like it did in the first part, reach the bottom and it makes this. As it's falling down each step, it's firing out a yellow line. If it touches the spider, it turns it yellow, stops it where it is, changes it into a flashing explosion, and then drops another spider down. And there we go. And that's our first video on how to animate graphics on the screen on the ZX Spectrum. I hope that makes sense. I know I'm not the best ex at explaining these, but um, please leave comments below if you think uh, anything there wasn't uh, very clear. And I'll make another video soon. Thanks for watching. Please thumb up the video and remember to subscribe. Cheers.